You're just a child My motives are clear Your heart is pounding You're losing your ground You're letting your sin I'm bringing Hey VC, welcome back. So, hitting you up with four new records today. Um, I actually only thought I had three new records because I've been kind of waiting for this package to come in the mail, but I actually forgot to talk about one of these um, in my last video, I think. I either got it, you know, during that video or the transitioning to now. Who knows, but anyways, I'm here to talk about them. So I got four mostly folk-related records, except for one. And so yeah, this package I've been kind of waiting on, you know, I ordered it probably mid-July and I haven't gotten any updates from USPS since July 25th. Um, and it also said it was in Des Moines, Iowa, which typically means I'll get it the next day. But for some reason it shipped it to Chicago and I got it from other, some other small town in Illinois. I don't know what that means, but maybe it got misplaced or something, but at least it's not a super scarce original or something like that. It's a repress, but it's a repress I've been wanting a long time and you don't see it very often. But anyways, let's uh, move on to these four LPs. Um, let's see. I'll probably start with the one that I forgot to show first. And so with the recent passing of Judy Dibble, um, I actually found this copy online maybe a day or two after her passing. And I can't believe I forgot to show this. So this is Trader Horn, their album Morning Way. It's on Janus. It's about a VG Plus copy. This is one I have not heard in a long time. Had to kind of get reacquainted with it. Um, nice animated artwork there. I, I particularly like the back cover compared to the front. But... Um, yeah, I saw a good deal on this. You know, typically when people pass, you know, the prices just skyrocket. But this was kind of undervalued, surprisingly. And so I just couldn't leave it for such a price that I found it at. Um, I don't think it's a white label promo, but some copies on Janus just have the white label. Get a shot of the label there. Uh, the other side has a sticker on it. Yeah, so with this album, it's primarily kind of progressive psych folk based. It's got some progressive leanings, but it's, and what makes it kind of progressive is, is that the uh, the album just kind of flows, you know, just naturally and doesn't really matter about the individual tracks so much as far as the consistent flow this record has. It just kind of floats along like a spring morning on the riverbank or something, <laughs> you know. Kind of floating in a little boat alongside the the paths of the forests and I don't know what I'm talking about it's kind of just brings up that imagery when you listen to this you know this English folk site so it features Judy Dibble it also features Jackie McCauley who played with uh, them he was I think he may have been an original member I'm not sure don't quote me on that but he plays like harpsichord I think yeah, harpsichord, flute, congas, piano, organ, some guitar. And then Judy Dibble is kind of known for playing the auto harp. And she was also, you know, famously known for being the first vocalist for Fairport Convention. But she also did work with Giles Giles and Fripp, um, Trader Horn. I'm not positive if she had a solo career. Um, she's basically known for those three works, though, with these three uh, projects. But... Um, if I could point out any individual tracks, like I said, it flows really nicely listening to this as a whole piece. But I would say the end of Side 1, the mixed up kind, and the title track, Morning Way, very beautiful material of its of its ilk. Very much of its one of a kind and, you know, kind of reminds me of stuff like Donovan, Brussel Machine, kind of in that, kind of in that light, so... Yeah, picked it up. It was under the $20 tag, so just typically you see it a little more more than that. 
Um, and then moving on, so I'm kind of shorting these in the order I found them. Um, so I picked up on another purchase from our friend Constantine, who's selling most of his collection on Instagram. And this one I was kind of debating on. It was kind of one of those albums where, um, you know, as a whole, I don't think it works as well as much as the individual tracks. So with this one, I'm kind of the opposite compared to Trader Horn. Um, as a whole, this LP maybe is, doesn't really live up to its reputation and is a little, little overrated in my opinion. But this is one I picked up on um, simply because the price and I figured I'd never see it at that price again. Uh, this is the Lollipop Shop. It's a original copy on Uni. Uh, the sleeve is just a tad worn, but it's pretty hard to find it without ring wear anyways, you know. I actually saw this in person one other time at the record show in Omaha, but he wanted probably double what I paid. Um, it is one of the more scarce titles on Uni, um, except I probably would prefer this over Druids of Stonehenge, which is, you know, arguably the most expensive Uni title. Still one I don't own, but not sure if I would want to own it, or I probably would not pay up for that. I don't know if there's a reissue of that or not, but I'm sure there is. Uh, but the Lollipop Shop, famously known for Fred Cole, who also played in Dead Moon, you know, a couple decades later. And, you know, it's most famously also known for You Must Be a Witch, which was featured on a later Nuggets compilation. And... You know, the first time I heard that track, I'm like, is this a song by Love? Because it's totally a love thing going on uh, in the vocals. Fred Cole has a very, is very reminiscent of Arthur Lee from Love, and also kind of a more Mick Jagger if he was singing like garage ballads. It kind of has that Mick Jagger flavor in his voice as well. So I think the record starts out, it opens up very nicely. Um, you Must Be a Witch, and then Underground Railroad, which may be my favorite track on here. That's the longest eight-minute track on the LP, and it kind of, the whole track kind of builds up like a railroad would, or like a uh, caboose engine would. Um, it's pretty exciting. And then the LP, to me, kind of lingers a little bit. It's not very consistent. kind of goes back and forth between the hard cuts and the softer cuts. Like, it's only a reflection. And then side two opens up with Don't Look Back. It's kind of more upbeat, kind of in that You Must Be a Witch kind of flavor. Um, my other favorite tracks, probably It's Making It. Um, and then when it gets to the very end of the album, like You Don't Give Me No More, it's kind of like you almost get tired of hearing Fred's whiny voice after a while. It's kind of like, you know, you wish he, they kind of mixed it up just a tad more like they were in the beginning, but... Otherwise, it's a very, very nice item to own, regardless, but um, probably not the best uni title, but it's certainly not one to be overlooked as well, because um, it does have a lot of love and a lot of fans as well. And every time I, you know, hear Lollipop Shop mentioned, people just seem to go crazy about Dead Moon. Um, I've heard a little bit of their first album, um, In the Graveyard, is that what it's called? I've heard a little bit of that, and it's like, I mean, it's pretty good for what it is, like a noisy garage punk, but people just seem to go, you know, batshit crazy over that, over that band, so I don't know what the whole hype's about, but um, here's a shot of the Uni label, and there is a very identical looking repress on this, which is unofficial, so do be careful when you're searching this one out. Um, there's a few variations of the original, but there's also a, I think it's an 80s repress that, you know, I've seen copies have ring wear and stuff, which is kind of like, you know, you just have to kind of look at the label and also see, you know, some of the little tiny text is a giveaway. So, um, on to the next two. So, when I was visiting back to my hometown, um, I actually took a different path going home. I've never taken this this uh, path back home and so when I had left my hometown I, I just thought you know I thought maybe I'd kind of look around see if there's any antique shops in these towns I have never really been through before and luckily there was 
least three of them, but um, I only found some interesting records at this one, so I'm just going to share the two that I'm probably going to keep for a while. And starting off with this one, so this was the first find in the first pile, and there was no really, uh, there was no price tag on these records. She was kind of actually going out of business, it sounded like, so she just kind of said name a price, and I said 10 bucks for them both, which is a fair deal. So I got this one, uh, The Joys of Life by Karen Beth. Now this is one I've always seen online and heard mixed reviews on this. Some people really love like half of it and you know the other half's kind of uh, timid if you could say. But it actually opens up with a really weak track. It's all over now which is kind of like an upbeat commercial horn pop track which could turn a listener off very quickly. But it's followed and as the LP moves along it actually gets stronger. So it's kind of basically temporary folk singer-songwriter but it does have some psych flourishes here and there and if I could point out some tracks Come December was a standout and the last two tracks on side one Something to Believe In and April Rain um, I've only given this LP like a couple spins but it was very you know very admirable listen something I could listen to again and um, tends to be a very cheap LP as well it's on the DECA label shot the label here. Nice clean copy. And I imagine, you know, copies of this probably have a lot of ringware too. A lot of black textured covers. But it's in nice shape. I'm actually very glad I found this in nice shape because all the LPs in this next pile, well, the next pile I went to because, you know, she saw I was interested in some records, so she took me into the back room and there was some more. And I found a few interesting items, you know, stuff on Polydor, but they turned out to be like comedy records or something, but I noticed a lot of like out of the country kind of pressings and I was like, it's kind of sparked my interest, what am I going to find? And then I recognized this cover right away because on my, you know, however many searches I do per day, I mean I don't do them every day, but I, I do my homework a lot, you know, I try to look up all these different lists on rate your music of private records and you know USA Psych there's one list on there and it's been a very helpful list as far as like what kind of album and what kind of art sleeves I gotta look for and this one I, I recognized right away and this was North Wind Calling by Mossy Davidson and it says Mossy Davidson's Alaska now um, I just remember this cover distinctly and so this is a 2LP set from Mossy Davidson, who was apparently an aunt or an aunt to the pop singer Jewel, who I had never heard of, but I guess a um, few people have pointed out that pointed that out to me. That she's a notable for being a pop singer. Um, so even looking at the gateful photos itself, it kind of tells you what you're going to get into here. Very pastoral. Alaskan landscapes, you know, kind of being whisked away in Mossy's own world of, uh, you know, living out in the mountains, living in a log cabin with your family and relatives. So I'll give a shot of the label here. And thankfully this one is in nice shape. Like I said, the pi these, this pile I was looking in, which this record was in, was kind of sketchy because they had a lot of warping and you know, it looked like they had some moisture issues, but this one turned out to be excellent. Um, I can't find any, you know, moisture issues or anything, so it turned out to be very, very lucky fine. But yeah, um, I had not heard this though. I, you know, had looked at the sleeve online and stuff, and so I kind of gave it a listen on my drive back home. And most of the songs were kind of sounding the same. A lot of the songs do sound very same. Um, and so it's kind of based around like a very minimal folk, um, I, I'm trying to think of like adjectives that describe it. Like I said, it feels very much like you're kind of living in her own world, you know, living out in the mountains. 
Uh, it features like harmonica, which I thought was a little off-putting, but it's got some flute. It's got very minimal instrumentation mixed around, but overall pretty pleasant, and I do have a few standout tracks. Uh, the last two tracks on side three, Where Does This River Flow and Flag of Green Lands Flying. It's very, uh, very dreamy, very pastoral. Um, and then Daydream Land on side one. So they're all original tracks, and I'll get a shot of the liner notes here. You guys want to read that? Um, so otherwise, it's just a nice surprise. That Friday, I picked them up. So that about does it, guys. So just been kind of hanging tight. Not sure if I'm going to do a live stream or not. Um, I've been kind of thinking about it, but work's been kind of, uh, you know, making me exhausted the the fact we have a we had a staff member test positive where I work so um, going to uh, kind of lay in low for a while but um, the days at work have been kind of stressful and you know I'm still still got a sane a sane mind I guess you could say keeping it all together keeping my shit real and this really sucks you know this year just really uh, took a toll on all of us and the thing I really miss doing is, you know, going to gatherings and, you know, visiting with family, but also, you know, just spending time traveling, you know, because that's one of my favorite things to do on my days off. So, anyways, uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think of my finds, and yeah, I really hope I get that in the mail, the one I'm looking forward to, that repress. Um, Constantine has an original of it, but that's a little, a little out of my price range. But I'll give you a hint: it's probably the most expensive major major label psych record. So if that tells me anything. Um, so take care, and we shall see you soon.